A lot of southwestern gardeners like to grow peaches, plums, apricots, nectarines, cherries, plants that are in the stone fruit group, and these are all plants that are subject to the peach tree borer. This peach tree is having a problem with the borers right now, and you see that it's not doing well. If we look at the base of the tree, we'll see the primary damage. We'll see other borer damage up and down the trunk of the tree. But right here at the base of the tree, we see the real problem. When the borer has attacked the tree, it'll produce a jelly-like sap indicating that there's borer activity here. You can see sap in other places on the tree, but this is the glob that really indicates the peach tree borer. Even when you don't find the borer in the jelly-like sap, you know there's a problem here. So you're going to need to do something to control the problem. Leanne Merrill with MNR Durango and Sectory is going to show us an organic way to deal with this problem. Leanne, how can someone deal organically with peach tree borers? Well, one method of control is using insect parasitic nematodes. Nematodes. Is that like root knot nematodes? No. Root knot nematodes are a plant parasite. These are parasites of insects. So they don't bother people? No. Or earthworms. So they're not going to hurt anything except the bad guys out right, there. Right. They're very specific within a range of insects as to what they parasitize. They're in a styrofoam box inside the cardboard box. That preserves them because they are a perishable living organism. So we'll just unpack the box. You'll see ice packs. These are to keep the nematodes cool in transit. They're very temperature sensitive. Just remove the sponges and place them into the water. You're just going to gently work the sponges in the water until the nematodes disperse out of the sponge. So what do we do now? Okay, after you receive them and you know they're cold, um, you can just leave them out at room temperature. I always leave them face down so the moisture is next to the nematodes mm -hmm. for about 15 minutes until they begin to warm up. So next we're going to talk about the methods of application. You can either apply with a hand watering can. That's you simple. just stir up the nematodes to make sure they're well dispersed and pour them around the base of the tree. Okay. Or you can use syringes if you can find holes in the bark where they have tunneled. You can just draw the nematodes up and stick the tip in the in the hole in the tree and inject the nematodes. Okay. Or you can use a backpack sprayer, a handheld backpack sprayer. These nematodes can withstand up to 300 psi. Wow. Most of these operate at about 10 to 15. So you're safe that way. You just have to make sure that you remove any filters that might be in the, in the nozzle and check down inside the tank and make sure there are no filters where it comes up into the hose. Okay. Well, let's and, go do it. Okay. Let's use the watering can today. All right. This peach tree is having some problems with bores. Yeah, I can see that. So what do we do? Well, let's apply nematodes right around the base. Okay. How do we do that? Um, we're going to stir up our resuspended contents so the nematodes are, are well mixed. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to pour them into the watering can. And we'll apply them right around the base of the tree. And it's important to do your application in the evening or when it's cloudy and raining like it is now. This moisture helps? Yeah. Okay. It's important to have damp ground, it facilitates their movement down into the soil profile. And how big an area do you have to wet? Well, I don't want to get too far away from the base of the tree in this case, okay. because borer larvae are primarily going to be right near the base of the tree or under the bark. Okay, borers, here it comes. So, you just go around and apply fairly quickly. It doesn't hurt to get the, the water and nematode suspension right onto the bark. These are microscopic, so some of them will move into the areas that have any kind of break in the bark or damage and get to the larva that way. That was really easy. Is there anything else we need to know, like when we should do it? Yes, it's important to apply the nematodes in the evening or on a cool, cloudy, rainy day. You d they're susceptible to UV rays, so you don't want to apply them during the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. If they dry out, they die. How about temperature? Uh, temperature is very important. Soil temperature is the most important. These grubs are going to be at about a one inch depth. And the nematodes need to be in soil temperatures of at least 50 degrees or warmer, and preferably under 85. Okay, so if people want to know more about this, so you have a website they can check. Yes, it's www.goodbug.com. Okay, thank you, Leanne. You're welcome.